Humanity's view of the cosmic tapestry and our place in it is changing. Breakthrough Discuss 2024 follows three transformative threads in space science. How AI and data science are scaling up the search for life. From the primitive to the advanced. How insights into exotic environments on Earth, in the solar system, and beyond are expanding the range of possible habitats for life. And how new launch technologies and robotic spacecraft promise to expand our own reach into the cosmos. So welcome to a cosmic tapestry for exploration. Welcome to Breakthrough Discuss 2024. Thank you. For those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, Pete Warden, the uh, chairman of the Breakthrough Prize Foundation. And I'd like to welcome you all to the eighth uh, Breakthrough Discuss conference. Uh, we missed one due to a, a global pandemic. Uh, but uh, this is going to be really cool, and you'll hear a lot about it. Uh, the, uh, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, to, to this conference, particularly this is our first one outside the United States. Uh, here at Oxford University, and, and uh, I guess this is the examination hall, so there's probably the spirits of many, uh, of many sad students floating around here. But uh, without further ado, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to introduce our host, uh, uh, Vice Chancellor Irene Tracy, and uh, uh, Chancellor Tracy, uh, thank you. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much, Pete, and thank you uh, uh, again for the visionary idea that you had to bring it to Oxford and to bring it to the UK. So I'm absolutely delighted to be here, and um, as Vice-Chancellor of this wonderful university, I'd like to welcome those of you who are not members of the university, who are visiting maybe the university and Oxford or the UK for the first time. It looks like you've got an absolute knockout couple of days ahead of you, uh, with, I understand, a nice dinner and a party tomorrow night. So, a Kaylee, in fact. Uh, so for those of you who don't know a Kaylee and are filled with dread, it's always a massive success. So do go to it and enjoy it. Anyway, a very, very warm, literal welcome to Oxford, and I uh, wish you all the very best for the next couple of days. Um, this is, I'm only just gutted that I can't spend um, actually the full two days listening to you. I actually always fancied myself as somebody that would work in astrophysics. I was that generation that adored Carl Sagan and everything about him. Um, but I was sort of steered down the medical, biological route, so I ended up as a neuroscientist. But I've got this love uh, still for planets. So I'm just sorry that I can't be here. Um, I'm really sorry you still haven't found aliens. Chris and I met many years ago, and he promised me that the search was on and that you would find them. Uh, but So keep going. Um, so no disappointment yet. Still still have great optimism that this will happen. And, um, and Chris actually uh, helpfully reminded me that we've got a long tradition um, in this university, not just obviously for physics and maths and, and those core subjects that underpin uh, many of the things that you are using to discover things, but also uh, in the 17th century, John Wilkins was very keen to get out there and discover other life and uh, had a couple of problems. The first was he had to get to the moon. The second was he was quite preoccupied. He was just telling me with how when he got there, how on earth is he going to talk to the people on there? So then he got preoccupied with what language he would have to develop that would be a universal planetary language to speak. Maybe that's coding. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, he failed, but we're still on the search. So we do have a rich tradition. You are in the room that for many of us is quite triggering because it's where we sat our exams, um, but it's a wonderful venue and I'm sure you'll enjoy uh, the facilities for the next couple of days. Uh, this conference does mark the, uh, it's the inaugural really start of having the Breakthrough Listen project head headquartered here in the university and um, of course that taps into that wonderful strength that we've got and a growing strength in the UK uh, where investment and more funding is putting into the space sector and I will do in my role both as Vice Chancellor but also in my leadership role academically in the UK in science to make sure that we champion and we push for the funding to be there for that wonderful extraordinary exciting uh, basic discoveries uh, because I know that when you talk to society although the rhetoric is often on very translation very translation cure diseases of course we must do that and that's my bread and butter historic uh, academic journey the public and the people are inspired 
by just the sheer joy of discovery and finding things bigger than themselves. And you are right in that space. So I congratulate you for that. And I wish you all the very best in that work that you continue to do. And I will do my part in terms of helping to try and steer funding and make sure that you are well supported in that regard. I'd also like to thank the Breakthrough Foundation for the support of the fellows and the students that you do. It's so, so key. Uh, in universities and in our research endeavours that we have that next generation, that pipeline of talent uh, that comes through. So thank you for the investment that you put there. I understand there's a new thing with a summer internship programme and we've got several of those interns here uh, as well. So this is a wonderful opportunity uh, for those of you who are doing a summer project. Don't be shy. Reach out in the coffee breaks, in the lunch breaks. Um, it's very rare that a professor, no matter how senior and brilliant they are, will not want to talk to you uh, because you have full of ideas and you're not sort of brainwashed by the way we think about things and so it's a great opportunity for you to challenge them to ask some questions so I encourage those of you who are in the audience who are on the internship program or even just new doctoral students make this a wonderful opportunity to make connections and ask questions and, uh, and learn new things so with that it gives me a great pleasure uh, to hand over to uh, a professor and a fabulous woman of science who needs no introduction. Um, she has been not just a champion in this field, but she's been a real champion for women in STEM and just a wonderful academic leader. Uh, and I don't know where she is actually, Jocelyn Bell Berlin, where are you? There you are. Can we please welcome Jocelyn? <laughs> Thank you, Vice-Chancellor, and thank you all for being here and a very warm welcome. If I say 1665 and 1667, no units, how many of you know what I'm talking about? About two, three, four. The first molecule detected in space, the OH molecule. I was a summer student at Jodrell Bank as part during my undergraduate degree, and was assigned to work with Gerrit de Jager, who was making observations at 18 centimeters, 1665, 1667 megahertz, and detected OH in space. And I got to work on that data. There was supposedly a computer in Manchester with a landline, but the landline between Jodrell and Manchester was down. So guess who did all the long arithmetic? Uh, lecturers back in Glasgow commented on how good my arithmetic was the following term. I was one of a very rare beast at Jodrell Bank, a female. They had once had a female grad student. She and a male had put the dormitory to a use for which it was not intended. He bragged. Sir Bernard Lovell got to hear of it and said, no more women. So I broke that barrier, albeit just for six weeks. But it's interesting which sex bears the brunt of these mutual encounters, isn't it? I've subsequently gone on, along with doing lots of different kinds of astronomy, to set up the Athena Swan scheme with some colleagues. Um, it's even now reached the USA. I think it causes quite a lot of hassle, but I'm actually very proud of it. And I'm sorry that we don't have more women here today. I suspect there are more women in astronomy than are represented here, looking around the room. There certainly are more women in the Oxford astrophysics, aren't there, than, than are you know, fractionally represented here. But uh, we've got a female vice chancellor, so congratulations, ma'am. No pressure. <laughs> so thank you very much to Breakthrough for the opportunity to be here. I'm looking forward very much to what's to follow, and I have to introduce the right bit of paper. I'm introducing Nikki Madahusen. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Maniko Madhusudan from the Institute of Astronomy, uh, University of Cambridge. Uh, first of all, it's a great uh, pleasure and a privilege to be welcoming you. Uh, to this uh, Breakthrough Discuss Meeting 2024, the first uh, of its kind in the UK. Um, we all know that the question, are we alone, has been one of the longest standing and most fundamental pursuits of uh, the human species, right? Given the technological prog uh, progress that's happening today, 
there is a realistic chance that we may be the first generation in human history to be able to say that we are not alone. If, if, if the species, if the alien species are indeed out there. Right, so as profound as this is, uh, what is not clear is that what is that, uh, that species like? Is it, are we going to detect biosignatures of microbial life or are we going to detect technosignatures of an alien civilization? We don't know, that's a completely open question. And the only way to know is to just look, right? To look as far as we can, as broad as we can, and with every instrument that we can, right? So we at uh, Cambridge have an extensive program in exoplanet science um, across various areas of exoplanet science, both at the Institute of Astronomy and other, uh, several other departments, and most recently, the Leverhulme Center for uh, Life in the Universe, where we focus on questions of habitability and search for life and, and origins of life and so on. My own research uh, is uh, on the search for habitable signatures and biosignatures on exoplanets using the James Webb Space Telescope. I'm also very ex excited by the developments at Breakthrough uh, Listen, uh, for uh, technosignatures. Uh, in this regard, I would like to congratulate Oxford and Breakthrough Initiatives to take up uh, this leadership role in, in this really uh, fr uh, frontier area. And more generally, I would like to say that uh, these are complementary areas, really, the search for biosignatures and technosignatures, and there are other uh, areas like experimental work and theoretical work, and it's only when we bring all these things together uh, that we can really address uh, this question at the best of human potential at the, at the current time. Uh, finally, if you look at the history of scientific breakthroughs, uh, they usually come by a confluence of innovative scientific ideas and major technological advancements of the time. Um, so the search for life is, is no exception in that regard. We really have to use everything that we can at this point. And this conference epitomizes that, that spirit so I'm really looking forward to next two days of, of extensive discussions, this exciting program, and, uh, and uh, various talks across multiple disciplines, astrobiology, uh, AI, and space missions, to see what is the best we can do at this time. So I'm really excited for this. Uh, so welcome again. Thank you for coming. And we look forward to your participation in this event. Welcome to Discuss 2024. So I would, uh, I would like uh, to now uh, introduce and call on stage Professor Michael Garrett from the University of Manchester. So good morning, everyone. Um, it's, it's great to be here. If you've never been to a Breakthrough Discuss meeting before, then you're in for a great couple of days. Uh, it really is fascinating. I just want to thank the organizing committee for putting together what I think is really a tremendous program. Um, I look at it personally as a sort of discussion also in, in the wider context. Um, the longevity of a civilization, I think, is actually key to all three topics that we'll be discussing today. So new space, the opportunities that are there to progress and to expand into the solar system, Everyone has a personal vision on that. I feel that I think it's extremely important that we do that, that in terms of um, the longevity of this civilization, of our species, it's really important to continue that exploration. So that's one topic that we'll talk about. Uh, and of course, life in the universe is very much connected, especially the search for intelligent life, which Breakthrough has basically transformed over the last 10 years. That's also all about the longevity of a civilization. If civilizations like our own are only around for a few hundred years, then it's going to be a very, very difficult problem. Um, but if they're around for a thousand years or 10,000 years, then it's tractable. Uh, and as previous speakers said, this could be the generation um, that will actually make that discovery. And the other thing about Breakthrough Listen is that it's actually not about old guys like me with gray hair but it's actually all the young people that are being um, employed and being trained, mostly PhDs at the moment, but in the future postdocs, they're gonna make a tremendous impact in this field. And that's what we need. We need people who will be thinking um, outside of the, of the box. Um, AI, I think, you know, the third topic that we're talk talking about, also, again, uh, you know, scientific advances will surely come already come from, from AI also in this field, but there are some challenges there. 
and again I go back to the longevity of a civilization, we are creating a new technology that's completely different from any other technology that we've had in the past. It can be self-progressing, it can be autonomous, uh, it will have an impact and it will result in rapid change that the young people here will have to contend with, both in terms of the opportunity that it presents, but also in the, in the challenges, and also the challenges it represents in terms of the longevity of our, our own species, and perhaps intelligence genetically in the, in the universe. So uh, it's gonna be a great couple of days, really interested to hear what the discussion will be, and just like to thank everyone for putting it all together, and enjoy yourself, thank you.